It's Thursday, June 20th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Hey, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. We're coming to you from Washington, D.C. I tell you, using a little bit different rig tonight, this is going to be a lot of fun. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But you guys know what comes next. Strap in. Here it comes. <laughs> Coming to you from a dimly lit hotel room with bad Wi-Fi and not enough power outlets, here's everyone's favorite jet-lagged geek, Todd Cochran. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from the nation's capital via the Geek News Central portable studio. Yes, here I am once again in a uh, not-so-dark and dingy hotel room, but I have uh, moved some furniture around using a different camera setup tonight, using a different uh, video system, and limited bandwidth. It's something about the, the farther east you go in the United States, the worse the bandwidth is. When you're in California... The bandwidth is terrific. When you're Texas, it's not so bad. But it seems like every time I get to the East Coast, every hotel, two thumbs down on the bandwidth. So tonight we're streaming uh, via my Verizon MiFi card. So we'll see how long <laughs> that thing uh, keeps up. And it didn't even connect to 4G. That's the that's the crazy part. But, uh, hey, I want to welcome all of the longtime listeners to the show. Welcome the Ohana to the show. I want to, of course, uh, give a shout-out to all of our listeners from around the world. Thank you for either viewing or listening to the show. And if you're new to the show, make sure you get over to geeknewscentral.com, sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter will be basically sent out immediately following the show. It has all the links to all the content that I want to cover tonight, including stuff that's been uh, sent in by listeners like you. If you want to watch us, you can do that uh, post-show via the Roku Box or Boxy. All you got to do is add the Tech Podcast channel to either one of those, and you'll find me right in there in some of the prominent listings for uh, tech shows. Um, lots going on. Lots been busy, busy, busy here. And um, this will be the next to last show before I head back to Honolulu uh, to be, uh, be home for at least three to four weeks. Um, as I talked about in the last show, my wife will be leaving a few days after I get home to go to Japan, and I'll be uh, doing the dad thing, hundred basically taking care of the kids and uh, taking care of the house and fortress while she's uh, while she's gone. But uh, we did do a Saturday morning tech show, so there was one from Honolulu on Saturday. You know, it was kind of crazy because I was scheduled to leave Austin Friday morning at 8 a.m., getting into Honolulu at 2.30 in the afternoon on United. Just about when this show, matter of fact, the, about the second I was finishing the show in um, Texas last Thursday, my phone jingled at me, a text message saying that my 8, 8 a.m. flight out of Austin had been canceled and that I had been rescheduled and rebooked, and I was then getting home at, to Honolulu like at 10.30 at night which really um, made things even tighter on my schedule. So I immediately got on the phone with United and being 1K. They were really good and basically said, hey, you have to be at the airport at, for a 6 a.m. flight, which means I had to leave the location I was at at 2 o'clock in the morning, which means I really didn't get any sleep Thursday night getting to the airport Friday morning. But I was able to make a connecting flight and really get home around noon on Friday, which was terrific. Now, I didn't, you know, pay attention to the, any other stuff going on. I heard about United's uh, crash of their computer system. Um, so really, I got home in the nick of time. But what was kind of funny was Saturday, of course, uh, Saturday morning I graduated, uh, walked for my college degree, and, uh, you know, I went to a reception afterwards, uh, family and friends and lunch, you know, the whole nine yards with that, and went home and packed the suitcase and, by really about five o'clock in the afternoon, I'm headed back towards the airport. So my wife uh, gets me to the airport, hug, kiss kids, and off they went. And as I'm checking in, I said, "Oh, I, I said I heard you guys had sure mayhem around here last night." She said, "Honey," she says, "You don't even know." She says, "We got everyone out of here, but the bad part was is the flight coming from Denver." And she told me the flight number. It didn't get into two thirty in the morning, <laughs> and I thought that was the flight I was originally supposed to be on. 
So I can't even imagine if I'd gotten if I would have been on that original flight, you know, things happen for a purpose, and I just lucked out. So that two thirty in the morning, I would have been like, I would have been a total zombie. As it was, everything seemed to work out good. I I got out uh, uh, Saturday evening just fine and slept all the way to Denver. Got, caught my connection, slept all the way to D.C. Uh, rental car stuff went smooth. Got in the hotel, everything was fine. Couldn't have asked for a better travel day um, getting in here, of course, traveling on Father's Day, but uh, got in just good, and heck, everything's uh, hunky-dory. So um, we'll see if everything goes good getting home on, on Saturday. But, uh, of course, if you're new to the show, I want to encourage you to get subscribed. You can do that via the second column of the website at geeknewcentral.com. And, of course, uh, basically stay in touch with us and, and do so by coming over to the website. We've got uh, great writers over there. They're putting up great content on on a near daily basis. All right, let me go ahead and look through my list here. Um, hey, let's care of a little little finance business first before we uh, go any deeper here into the show. Hey, I want to uh, pay your uh, bring your attention to three GoDaddy deals, and I actually did a blog post uh, today outlining each of the three deals, and these are very short term deals that are probably going to go e before the end of the month. So deal number one, you get a free dot info domain with a normal $7.49 purchase of a .com. So when you go to purchase a .com, it's going to give you the option to select the .info. If you select that, when you get to the checkout counter, you can use the promo code GEEKINFO, and you'll get that .info domain free. GoDaddy number two is you get the a .co domain for $10.99. Use the promo code GEEKJUNE, G-E-E-K-J-U-N-E, and that'll get you the 1099.co domain. GoDaddy number three is you get free private registration, a 9.99 year value when you register or transfer one or more domains. The promo code for that is Geek Free. All this is going to end here soon. So you've got Geek Info, Geek June, Geek Free, and of course all of my promo codes at geeknewcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy, where you can find the full list of promo codes. The Geek 199 code, it's gone. It's the $1.99.com for new customers that has expired. It's no longer in existence, but we have a huge number of promo codes at Geek News Central that you can that you can use. Saturday, of course, we had the um, the morning show, Saturday morning tech show, and that turned out to be real good. I got up early and uh, started at 6 a.m. Honolulu time. We knocked that out with uh, Norbert Davis from Totally Cool Tech Podcast and Dr. Bill from drbill.tv or drbill. I think it's CC, Computer, Computer Curmudgeon, and uh, had a great chat with those guys for an hour. Also, the latest edition of Robot Underpants has been released uh, this afternoon at Geek News Central. Definitely check out those two shows. And make sure you get subscribed to all the podcasts at Geek News Central. And don't want to forget here, The Gadget Professor as well. Um, had a, you know, when I was driving through D.C., I, um, I was heading towards my hotel and following the GPS. And, of course, you know, the, your best instincts are say, I'm supposed to go that way. And the GPS is telling me to go this way. It's, you know, that type of situation where the GPS could leave you, drive you off a cliff. Well, instead, mine drove me right into right into downtown D.C., right in through the mall and the Lincoln Memorial and everything. So actually, when I was uh, on my way to the hotel, I actually took some time and kind of – it's been at least how many years since I really drove through downtown D.C.? Probably well, – it's been a while. And – Wow, what a lot of changes. A lot of changes. If you haven't been in D.C. in a number of years, there's just so much more to see. I was just I was like, whoa, that wasn't there before. And I was, you know, head was snapping one way or the other. And uh, roads have changed ever since 911, of course. But um, lots, of, lots of new stuff. And uh, so I would really wish I would have had time to park and get out. But you could tell it was tourist central. People were walking across the street in front of traffic when the you know when they weren't supposed to. So I was really kind of you know a little bit nervous because of all the uh, all the foot traffic, trying to be careful not to uh, have anybody end up on my hood of my car. But uh, it does just completely blow me away how people completely disregard the traffic laws when they're you know maybe they're just oh you know and they they. They lose a sense of where they're at, I guess. I don't know. But um, I could see why people could get hit real easy uh, this time of year in downtown D.C. But um, 
anyway, had a good time just kind of driving around. Going to spend some time uh, Friday, I think, being able to do the tourist thing. And I'm going to pick up pick uh, one of the museums to go to that I haven't been in a long time and, and do that. And the process, we're going to have a meetup as well Friday night. That's kind of the plan. There is also the potential that I may be going down to my sister's in Chesapeake, Virginia. So uh, I'll let those of you know Thursday whether or not that's going to happen or not, whether or not we're going to have the meetup on Friday. Um, so just kind of working with her on, on her schedule as well. As, a, as always, make sure you check out geeknewcentral.com forward slash offers, geeknewcentral.com insider, become an insider of the show. That's where you can financially support the podcast here to help us continue to do what we do. And if you're on Twitter, you can follow me at Geek News. Of course, if you have comments on today's show, you can send those to geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is 619 342 7 Three six five. What I'm doing tonight is I'm using um, a different camera. I found a nice little tripod for it. It really f it fits perfectly on a desk. And what I'm I've, I'm traveling with my Mac this time, and I'm using a new program called well, it's not a new program. It's a program called Wirecast. And um, so it's, this is be a little bit of an experiment to see how well this works. And I've just got it set up in this very basic mode, no overlays or nothing like that. I did pay for the commercial license for this, which is quite expensive, so I'm hoping it's going to work out. I'm doing some testing here, and the gear that I had to bring was about, uh, well, it takes up two or three more plugs on my power strip. But overall, I think this may be my new new portable studio as far as video goes. And ultimately, my goal is to bring in a a green screen while I'm on travel and have a virtual set and that way uh, you're always not just looking at hotel room behind me uh, when I'm on travel but uh, just kind of let you know what's going on there um, let's take care of a little business here and then we'll get right into the tech content tonight you know when I'm away I don't have to worry about my home my home is secure I have a security system, I have uh, cameras that are monitored, and a security system that's monitored, and uh, my wife is a, basically has a confidence that uh, when she leaves the house or is even at home that uh, things are locked down and that she's going to be protected. The kids know how to hit the panic button if there was a fire or if they need hospital. There's all kinds of different options um, in security systems today, and that really gives me um, peace of mind. So I want you guys to think of who's watching your home when you're not there or if you are there and you're trying to make sure that nothing happens during the night while you're sleeping. So help protect your home with a security system monitored by my good friends at ADT, the leader in home security. What we want you to do is we want you to call Protect Your Home. They're an authorized ADT dealer. And they're, what they're going to do is Protect Your Home is going to get you an $850 worth of equipment for free. They're going to get you activation for free, and they're going to get you set up with the number one monitoring service in the country. And, of course, it comes with the world-famous ADT yard signs, and monitoring charges are really just over a dollar a day. And this is definitely more than most of you are paying for your coffee, your snacks, and this is the safety of your family and possessions. And you can save up to 20% on your homeowner's insurance as well. So again, there's a $99 installation charge, 36-month monitoring agreement, and call for terms and conditions. And what you got to do is you got to pick up the phone right now and dial 1-866-778-3127. That's 866-778-3127. I did want to just share with you guys, I, don't, I think I told it on the Saturday morning tech show that my security system and the cameras on my security system are actually responsible for capturing the license plates number of a vehicle that um, hit a house down the street from ours, which has resulted in an arrest and pending conviction. Um, you know, it's nothing like, you know, at least the, the, my neighbors didn't have a security system, but because I did and because I had a um, the foresight to protect my home my neighbors are actually going to uh, at this point now going to uh, see some seek some justice from the individuals that uh, that hit their house and uh, you just never know how it's going to come into play but kind of an interesting spin-off I told that on my on the Saturday morning tech show talk to the guys I think about that a little bit or maybe I told you guys last Friday but um, um, this is a great service 
So definitely check out ADT. And again, there's a link on the website. And you can also call that number again at 866-778-3127. All right, let me go ahead here and, and uh, let's get right into the content tonight. I got a stack of it for you. Um, and first thing is first is we, of course, I want to remind you to check out Robot Underpants and the morning show. And, of course, we've got a, a blog post about the GoDaddy special offers on the front page of Geek News Central. So make sure that you uh, get those checked out. He was announced today by ICANN that they have approved new top-level domains. And this is huge from the vantage point now that for a mere $185,000, you can apply to have your own dot .company dot uh, Canon dot Microsoft dot Apple dot Raw Voice dot Geek News. You too, for $185,000, can apply and uh, get your own top level domain name. So, what they're going to expect to happen here is a huge land rush now for companies to get the dot car dot bank dot sports dot all these different top level domains. Now, some of those branded will be owned by the companies. Some of them that are generic will be available for all of us to purchase the uh, purchase extension from. And uh, the ICANN board voted 13-4, one against, and two abstained during its 41st international meeting that's currently underway in Singapore. So this is a, this is pretty a pretty big deal. And I guess the way I want you to think about how this is going to change the landscape of the Internet, imagine me being able to tell you Folks, go over to Todd.GeekNewsCentral or Todd.GeekNews or go over to um, ADT. Dot, um, um, ADT, dot ADT or Podcast.ADT. You can see how it changes the landscape of the Internet. No longer do I have to go to tell you to go to Canon.com forward slash this, forward slash that, forward slash that. You can actually make, if you own your own TLD, your own top-level domain, you can make these very simple, you know, relationships. Um, I dot Apple takes you to all the Apple devices, or you know, it's there's this whole cool ecosphere that is going to explode now, and um, we can we can go from dot com dot nets dot orgs to the future where it's going to be dot bank dot nyc dot apple dot Microsoft. But uh, whoever can come up with that hundred and eighty, and I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a huge amount of businesses that are, are a new launching of companies based around this whole new ecosphere, top-level domains. So it's going to be very cool, and we'll see how this all lays out for uh, brands and uh, being able to protect people's copy, you know, trademarks and so forth. And I'm sure it's going to be um, an interesting time to watch. But um, what do you think? Think we can raise $185,000 to uh, get the uh, TLD.geek news? <laughs> Be honest with you, if it, every one of you, if every one of you gave just a dollar, if every one of you that listened to the show gave just a dollar, we could raise the money in one show. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's t move on to an article over on Forbes. This one here, I want you guys really pay attention to. And if you have a young adult in your family that is, I would say, 16 or above, or even younger, you really, I'm serious here, this is an article that you have to right now, today, take someone that is under your cognizance, or a, a, anyone that's, you know, a family member that's doing stupid stuff on the internet, to really take a look at. Because now, your embarrassing job, Facebook photos, comments you've made on the internet, are going to haunt you for up to seven years. Last week, the FTC gave a stamp of approval to background checks uh, by a company that screens job applicants based on Internet photos um, and their postings. This company is, I'm going to go through here and see if I can actually find the name of it. Um, this is in line with what they call the FTC determined that the Social Intelligence Corporation was in compliance with the Fair Credit Reporting Act. In other words, that means what you've said or posted to a Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, blog, and Internet in general may become part of a standard part of your background when you apply for a check. Now, we all knew that Google was already, I mean, companies were already Googling you and Facebooking you and looking for information on you that way. But here's the new wrinkle. 
Social Intelligence is the company that offers a service to employers where they build files on people. So if they f find something on the web that does kind of, they, they go through and scour as much public information as they can and they build uh, dossiers on you. So even if you put something up and you have erased it because you thought, oh man, I shouldn't have said that, or I shouldn't have put that drunk photo, drunk photo up, um, they're going to have this information cataloged on you. It also depends on where you have your privacy settings set. It. So if you don't have your privacy settings set correctly, and they can easily find this information just by scouring your profile and using a Google type of uh, uh, system to actually pull this data in on you, um, you're screwed. Um, people have been saying stuff uh, uh, that could be considered r uh, racial. They put uh, photos up on partying. Um, different types of stuff that this company is collecting, comments that you're making. It's it's like all of a sudden now you, you're really going to be even closer under a microscope because they're able to store this information. And um, so social intelligence is saying they're going to keep files on people for up to seven years. So it doesn't matter if you unjoin face group, Facebook doesn't matter if you cancel your Twitter account. Doesn't matter if you delete pictures off Flickr or remove posts off blogs. It's all going to be there. And they're going to go back and they're going to provide this to a potential employer and they're going to weigh that in their hiring decision. Um, this is They're going to use this just like they would a criminal and credit background check that they're doing on you today when you go to hire into a position. So you're going to have social media background checks, you're going to have criminal checks, and you're going to have a credit history. And, you know, you may have the best uh, credit background. You may not have anything in your criminal record, but if you've got some weird stuff in your Facebook account that they have basically indexed, you know, you may not be getting a job. So um, then they've got FTC approval that they can store this information on people and provide it uh, back to... Uh, back to the company and I have to laugh because you've got these new services now where it can black out your eyes but please if any of my kids or anything had their eyes blacked out I would still know their face I would know that that was them um, so you know just trying to hide yourself isn't always going to be possible either so this is an article upon Forbes and I tell you it's a big deal so be careful out there alright now in a more interesting article on science this has got me completely intrigued. The um, researchers at Wake Forest University, in conjunction with the University of Southern California, used a group of medicated, I guess, mice to demonstrate methods by which memory can be restored with the flick of a switch. The, oh, it was rats. The rats were outfitted with a tiny rat-sized electrodes and exposed to pharma pharmacological substances which caused them to forget the connection between pushing a lever and getting water. And then by turning the electronic switch on, and I don't know how this is, how this completely worked, the scientists were able to restore the rat's memory of the task. Turning it off made them forget again. So I guess they had some sort of, they say, pharmacological substances. What does that mean, pharmacological? If they were hooked up to something, that means they were they're altering brain waves or something, but it almost sounds like some sort of pharmaceutical is used as well. But anyway, what they're going to be doing here is they're going to be testing this process on primates and perhaps someday using the research to benefit victims of strokes, Alzheimer's, or injury induced memory loss. I'm telling you, I mean, you know, here we are. We, you know, we are. What's going on inside our brain is is all electrical, right? There's electrical connections being made, and and being able to speak as a series of electrical stuff. You know, it connects to making the muscles and the tongue and the air, and you know everything else do what it does. They're getting so good at this that at some point, and here we're seeing it right now, they are basically able to shut these rats off from a memory that they have and then turn it back on with the flip of a switch. Now they don't give a lot of details here. Um, there's more information on the USC site directly and I read this over at Engadget but the implications are endless on this. So if they refine this in the next 20 years 
hey, you know, talk about the matrix, jacking in and having stuff uploaded. <laughs> Who knows? It very well could be. Um, and, the, and the implications are huge for Alzheimer's patients or those that are um, have been injured and have memory loss. You know, you know all of a sudden you're, you're going to kind of give them back some basic memory functions, teach them ABCs, teach them, you know, you, you, it's very subjective, obviously. But, um, wow. You know, if you think about it, when you are, you don't know how you remember the ABCs, only that you know them, right? When you have a, a, a something that causes a memory loss, maybe you can't remember, that can't speak, or you don't know your, your alphabet or whatever it may be that's, you know, has been affected. You don't remember how you learned that as a child. So if they can re just input this and just like turn that memory back on um, very 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 cool stuff and it's again it's all you know there's some resonant stuff in your brain that's going on that's storing this stuff but it's all electrical connections being made to you know be able to make that memory forthcome I'm sure we're many many years away here but um, very cool stuff and uh, they hope to do this with people at some point they do say that they restored the memory of drugged rats so there must be some sort of uh, chemical uh, reaction going on as well well we've been talking about how it takes how it gets how, how late it gets before it gets dark and here we are 8 30 and it's still relatively uh, bright out and uh, today or actually on tomorrow the 21st is known as the summer solstice, and it shouldn't come as a surprise but we're, this will be the longest day of the year and uh, so for those of us up here in the in the northern hemisphere we are going to have our longest daylight day tomorrow and uh, everything from uh, that day forward it's uh, going in the reverse direction but um, pretty cool stuff and there's some good articles on space.com about some things you may not know about the longest day of the year and it's not the longest day the longest day of daylight of the year Switching right back to, to gadgets and privacy. How many of you would voluntarily allow someone to track you to a very high degree? You know, most of us are concerned about protecting our personal data and information. But a surprising chunk of Android users have volunteered to give up a group of University of Cambridge researchers a, a look at exactly how they use their cell phone. By downloading the Device Analyzer app from the Android market, more than 1,000 people have allowed the data collection program to harvest statistics in the background while they use their phones. Those statistics varying from when the power switched on to which apps are in use are then made available to users via the Device Analyzer website. And, uh, you know, obviously the University of Cambridge is a very respected uh, site, and I'm sure they're being very careful on how they share this information. But it seems pretty surprising to me that over a thousand people have been basically say, "Yeah, take whatever you want from my phone, and use it in your, um, use it in your study and, and make it available publicly on this website." Have any of you used this app? Have any of you done this? I'd love to hear from you if you have. Geeknews at gmail.com. Geeknews at gmail.com. Um, Someone said, I like the live intro page. Is that new? Never saw it before. What intro page was that there, uh, Patias Pickle? I didn't have a new intro page today. Was that the... I don't know which one you, <laughs> you saw. So, uh, kind of interesting here. I don't know what you're referring to. I'm looking at the chat over here and what Patias Pickle had to say. Um, how many of you use uTorrent? Well, I use uTorrent for completely legal purposes, downloading files that I'm legally allowed to via uTorrent. But uTorrent, with the owners are BitTorrent, have been sued for patent infringement. BitTorrent, the makers of uTorrent, and the BitTorrent mainline client have been sued for infringement of a file sharing related patent. According to complaint, the BitTorrent clients are infringed on the rights of San Francisco based Transcend Broadcasting Network. The company demands compensation, and if the court agrees, this case would have disastrous impact on the BitTorrent landscape. So, uh, this is supposedly has something to do with uh, infringing and uh, on some sort of copyright. So, this is crazy. Um, 
I'm trying to look here. Oh, it's a patent. The patent in question is titled Media File Distribution with Adaptive Transmission Protocols and was g granted in 2007. Well, peer-to-peer -peer has been long, long before 2007. It describes a file sharing system consisting of a file database, a transfer client, and distribution server. I think there's going to be previous history here where BitTorrent's probably going to be able to, uh, to fight on this, but uh, this could be very, very bad for the file sharing uh, uh, community. Um, well, I don't know what happened on Live.GeekNews, their podcast, but well, it's, uh, should be, probably you saw an ad by the folks from uh, Ustream. That may have been the intro. What did they advertise to you when you, when you started the show? You shouldn't have seen my intro because, uh, I don't have it rolling here in this, uh, in this format. Uh, coming up next, hey, why should any buy an iPad instead of one of the alternatives out there? So what they've done at Technologizer.com is they've come up with 13 ways an Apple competitor might answer a really difficult question. Um, and it goes anything from apps to hardware to features, different sizes, um, different software, better entertainment services, uh, talking about different marketplaces, um, the openness of the systems. Uh, so it just goes on and on about what could be the thing that would push you over the edge on having a different uh, different device. Now, my wife was playing with um, her friend's um, iPad, or not an iPad, it was a tablet that was running on Android, and it was significantly smaller, and she's like, honey, this is perfect. This fits in my purse better than the iPad does. And she says, see that how that fits? I can close. I don't have to carry the oversized purse. And so for her, I was kind of surprised because... She really didn't care about the operating system. All she really cared about was the fit form factor and and being able to the coolness of being able to use it smaller and be able to do the same thing she does with her iPad now by surfing the internet, and getting email, and all those basic things. She doesn't load a lot of apps. So I kind of had this like aha moment. And uh, so what we may be doing here is if she's really that set for it. I may end up picking up uh, an Android tablet for her and letting her use that. And we'll let my wife be the guinea pig on using <laughs> the Android in the house. Now, um, it sounds like a foreign thing, using the Android, right? But uh, she's been trying to figure out how well she can use her iPad in Japan and been talking about Wi-Fi connection with her sister and so forth. I think she's going to be okay but she she got she came to a conclusion which kind of surprised me the other day. She says, "Honey, I think I'm going to have to take my laptop with me." And I'm like, "Why?" She says, "Well, she says uh, there's some things I'm not going to be able to do on my iPad in Japan where I can use the laptop and do that. So we'll see what she decides to take with her on her trip. So I'll keep you advised on that." She's becoming more savvy. I love it. I really, really do. How many of you have a slow internet connection like my mom does? Still today, I mean, you know, my mom's connection is not that fast. It's on a 1.5 meg, uh, basically down and about 250 to 300 k up, much better than what she was on dial-up. But a lot of Apple users who are on dial-up or have limited internet connections are freaking out, especially if they have more than one Mac in the house. How they are going to um, do the uh, do their updates, their four gig upgrade to the new version of, of Lion. And so Mac is basically saying, hey, you can come to our store and you can download it on our Wi-Fi. You know, I bet you that this is going to end up being a well-talked-about upgrade cycle because you have lots of people that are going to be trying to download this 4 gig. Can, uh, so it's a big download for anybody, even on a on a cable uh, on a cable or DSL. It's still huge, and especially at multiple machines. You know, look at my house. I have... Um, three laptops, three Mac laptops, one Mac server, or not Mac server, but a Mac desktop, and then I have the um, the old uh, mini, the Mac mini, which we haven't, we're not using right now, but I'll probably upgrade it. So that's, you know, that's 20 gigs of downloads that I'm going to have to do to upgrade all the machines in my house. If you're on a bandwidth capped service 
this may become an issue for a lot of people. Or if you're on a limited connection, it's going to be a big issue. Now, speaking of bandwidth caps, Time Warner, again, is all of a sudden talking about bandwidth caps and metered bandwidth. So we could foresee that coming from Time Warner. Again, we covered that extensively on the Saturday Morning Tech Show. If you want more details on that, listen into that show. But, you know, what are you going to do if you're not on a, on a very fat connection? You're, you're going to have to go find a place to download this update because there's not going to be a disk. There's no soft. There's no, you're not going to get a DVD to update. So this should be very interesting to watch. Um, oh, I understand what you're saying, Podcast Pickle. Yeah, the live.geeknewcentral.com. The live.geeknewcentral.com is a landing page we've had for a while. And uh, we've just been trying to shove people over there when we do live events to let them know that it's there. They can chat, follow, subscribe to the show there as well. Um, moving on here. Tech Dirt to two fan fantastic articles and these are definite reads the first one is entitled the many killers of the music industry the digital era and the second one is the many killers of the music industry the analog area era so here's here, and just think about this you know we, the the music industry has complained on how they're going to be killed by so many different uh, uh, services it just if you read through all this and it talks about how the industry fought the invention of, of records and how they were not against the 8-track and how they were against cassettes and how cassettes were going to be the end of their industry. And it went on and on, you know, and they, and they complain. And this was, and they even go back to the very beginning, the formative years, when they were starting to um, save recordings and have them in, uh, in different types of um, – formats allowed them to be played back and how it was going to destroy music because people weren't going to be able to listen to it live and they've always whined on how the how they their their industry is going to be destroyed because of these these technologies well then you know those were the analog years then you get into the digital year and then oh how the compact disc was going to be um you know it was going to affect them so and you know it just goes on and on and on um the different formats and stuff how they have complain that it's going to impact them and now we're moving into the cloud where all our media is going to be stored up there so it's all about how artists are going to be hurt and not making any money um i think a lot of it has to do with them not paying their artists where their money's deserved you know um so we'll see and uh, we'll see where this goes but um you know, when they, people tried to sell used CDs, oh, that's just going to be detrimental to sales of, of, of all our content. And it just, you know, it just makes you laugh. It was the old whole VHS Betamax fight. But uh, they're all a bunch of crybabies, and they continue to cry about how the, the, uh, the world is up against them, yet uh, the world keeps moving on, and they're, they're essentially forced to. If you were on Netflix this weekend, you may have had some trouble streaming. They had some issues. Uh, on top of that, Sony has, not apparently Sony, but Stars has apparently removed Sony movies from the Netflix lineup. Uh, apparently there's some sort of an issue going on, some sort of contract issue, but what it really boils down to is that we as users are being held um, as pawns or being used as pawns and forcing Netflix to pay uh, probably a lot more money than, uh, um, than what they would have to normally. But uh, Stars is, uh, you know, playing an upper hand here and, and, you know, dangling the movies out here and saying, oh, come on, Netflix, give us some more money or you're, you're going to lose users if you don't. But it's uh, about time that we uh, as users and as customers quit being used as pawns by the, by the movie industry. Google TV is starting to show up in Android market device listings, and this is pretty exciting stuff. So, of course, as a Google TV owner, I'm kind of waiting to see what exactly he's going to be doing and what they're going to be making uh, accessible via the Android market. And today, it looks like it was a small step toward that, as I guess some people are seeing Google TV systems show up in the Android market device listings. And uh, we don't know what the 3.0 update is going to do to the market access, but um, with Google scooping up Sage.TV or Sage TV in a deal, there could be all kinds of uh, developments going on with the Google TV. I still think that uh, it's, it may take a few tries, but Google is going to get this Google TV thing right. 
We'll see what happens. Hey, if you're a Verizon customer and you're due for a renewal on your contract um, or you're getting ready to switch phones, you need to do it before July 7th. Verizon has basically said that they are going to um, basically doing a data rate change. Uh, this was kind of uh, been leaked out in two or three different places that uh, they're going to be changing up pricing and people are not very happy about it right now. Now what they're saying is is that you're going to get two gigs for thirty dollars, five gigs for fifty, ten gigs for eighty, tethering package is going to cost you an additional twenty and if you go over it's ten dollars per gigabyte used which is ridiculous. Um, we, I guess I shouldn't surprise any of us. We knew that Verizon was going to be making some changes. So if you are on an unlimited data plan currently, you're going to need to really pay attention and make sure uh, that when you renew or buy a new device that you don't get uh, rolled into these new pricing plans. Now, the recent plan that I bought with my when I renewed my Verizon, my, when I went to a Verizon MiFi, was uh, I got uh, 5 gigs for 50. That was my price and uh, didn't need to get the 10 gig plan. I may end up regretting that, but uh, we will see over time. But, uh, you know, data, the mobile data usage has doubled in the last year. So, you know, they got to come up with some ways to, you know, keep all of us from using too much bandwidth. Over on the Skype side of the house, Skype, apparently today the uh, CEO over there fired a bunch of executives. Uh, not a lot of uh, details on why, but uh, they got rid of a bunch of people apparently just before the full acquisition was to take place and saying that not all of them are going to get, uh, you know, there's money that's transferred hands when you have a buyout like that. Sometimes people get balloon payments and, and they get a windfall, but uh, apparently they fired a bunch of people, a bunch of executives over at Skype today. So we'll see what the fallout of that is. Hey, over on NewTV.com, actually, over at, excuse me, over at GigaOM in their new TV section, um, they're saying that the next set-top box could be size of a deck of a, a deck of cards. Um, it appears that the future of TV navigation is moving towards cloud-driven programming guides, and really, what's going to happen here is that the um, the set-top box, all it's really going to have to be used for is decoding, connected to the internet. It gets the menu from the cloud, and then you want to stream something. All it has has a very simple decoder to an HDMI out into your TV, and they're saying that that device would ha not have to be any bigger than a deck of cards. No power cords, no coax cables, um, no big clock flashing at you, uh, and it could be very impressive, and it could all be tied to the cloud where you could have DVR functionality and everything. don't know how they get away with not having a power plug, but... This is the uh, the rumor here on what could be coming in the next round of set-top boxes. And I think this is smart. I wish Roku would have done this from the beginning because, well, the challenge is you have to have some sort of a menu system to get connected to the Internet if you're doing wireless. But y when we update our apps to Roku, we have to submit them, and it goes through a process. But it would be so much easier if everything was just sitting up in the cloud and the whole menu system was driven from the cloud uh, kind of like what happens with uh, with Chrome and the Chrome apps. Um, pretty interesting what's going on there, but we will see. We'll see where this goes with set-top boxes. Now, I'm not necessarily a big fan of this guy. He used to be on MSNBC. His name's Keith Olbermann, but Keith Olbermann will be returning to the air airwaves on current TV tonight. And I'm sure some of you that watch him have already seen his new studio. He's been tweeting photos of it today. And uh, he's going to be joined by Ma Michael Moore on the inaugural uh, event of his show. And it, what, while it, you know, we knew this was coming, we knew he was going to be going over to current TV, here's something that I find very interesting that he tweeted. He says, iTunes Podcast Invo. Can't be, can't be full shows. Cable carriers have us over a barrel, but there will also be a web-only video. So in other words, what he's saying here is, and this is what he tweeted, iTunes Podcast Info, semicolon, can't be full shows, dash, carrier, cable carriers have us over a barrel, dash, but there will also be a web-only video. So even though he's going to current TV and he's trying to go digital, 
he cannot put up full renditions of his show because, once again, he signed a contract with someone that's restricted him on where he can move his media. And Current TV is trying to be, you know, this up-and-coming channel. I think uh, Time Warner moved it to, like, sh channel 800 or something, somewhere out in the boondocks um, in, uh, at least in Hawaii. But um, it is interesting what he is, uh, what he's coming up with with this or what his restrictions are. But I guess he's going to um, uh, be on five or six days a week and doing what he normally does, his normal stick on reporting the news. And um, But, he, you know, current TV is not in every marketplace, so it's kind of curious that they're limiting the digital distribution of his show. Because it just goes to show you these old-time guys are uh, continue to be locked in to their old-time models um, in the new media, or actually in the media space, which uh, I guess for our point, it's it's good because uh, they can't be everywhere. We can't, of course, we can't be everywhere they are, but we are with the Roku and Boxy and devices like Samsung IPTV. Windows 8 Build 7889 is out on BitTorrent, so uh, this is a new version, and uh, it's out on the internet. So if you want to go pick it up, you can. Uh, if you want to run it and give it a try, want to put a uh, a Shout out to KL over at Geek New Centro who wrote up an article on called Motion X GPS Drive. It's a pretty cool little app that he just uh, was playing with here recently. And uh, you got to check this one out. This one here looks like something that's useful for those of you that are on the road a lot and moving around. And while it does have GPS functionality, it also has all kinds of additional stuff in there that lets you find um, places of interest around where you're located. And it's updated on a regular basis, maybe a little bit more current than what many of your, uh, that you have in your uh, manual GPS is in your car. There is a little bit of um, court news come out on basically fair use per se. An appeal court has uh, dealt a blow to what has been known for a number of years as the hot news doctrine. Uh, what has happened here, a federal appeals court has cleared away Monday for a final news website to publish stock market analysis, private buy and sell recommendations in re near real time. This is uh, really kind of uh, hammering away at the traditional media where a century-old legal doctrine that gave media companies control over the time sense of news that they report in regards to finance. There used to be this, like, they had to delay 30 or 45 minutes, and, and they had to be real slow on reporting, but they're going to be able to do stuff almost real time here. And what this involves is information that is basically, if you're if you are a rich trader and you're doing a hundred thousand dollars worth of trades a year through uh, Merrill Lynch or Barclays or any of these other big brokerage firms, you get on the inside track of getting information about stuff that's hot that's moving you get emailed notices and you basically like these flash alerts and basically what it does is they take care of the people that are spending the most money so the rich get richer and the poor don't have access to this information so this website called the fly in the wall is going to now be putting out uh, buy and sell recommendations that were intended for bank clients and high um, high-end folks that were doing a lot of trading a year and this is big. Um, so again, this was only released to clients that had fifty to one hundred thousand dollars in trading commissions. This wasn't dollars traded. This was how much they were making a brokerage firm. So uh, this is going to make it available to the masses, to the rest of us, in near real time. And uh, the folks are very upset about this, saying this is going to affect negatively their ability to essentially control the market. So this is good. This is good. On this is a win for us. And um, uh, we'll see where this goes. But uh, if you are a investor, the flyonthewall.com may be the place you want to uh, sign up. As a, and this is a service you can sign up from them and pay a monthly recurring fee to have access to this info. Another ca court case, Wright Haven has uh, had another loss. The judge, is judge has ruled that reposting an entire article is fair use. This kind of even surprised me. So in other words, if I take this this article over on Wired, if I cut and paste this whole article right into Geek News Central, um, even without attribution links, the judge says in some instances that could be fair use. As long as I put commentary in and around it, uh, on it and this guy had taken a full article and only written in, uh, four additional paragraphs about the article, 
uh, and it quoted the article and provided a link back to it. But basically, the judge is saying, hey, that was fair use. So a big win on uh, for bloggers and a big loss by the folks at Right Haven. So uh, it would be interesting to see where this one develops and if Right Haven ends up appealing this. How many of you are finding web pages too long to load? You know, Geek News Central takes a little bit to load. We got a lot going on on that website. I guarantee it's not taking six seconds to load my website. But uh, they're saying that uh, people are wasting a lot of time online right now because sites are taking a lot longer to load. And we all need to be working to make our sites uh, load quicker. And boy, I tell you, we've really tried. It's, it's tough when you have a dynamic website with lots of content, lots of media. It just takes longer to load than normal sites do. But uh, a new case study is saying people are losing about uh, 10 minutes a day waiting for the web. So does it bother you that you're waiting for the web? Love to hear your feedback. Geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is 619-342-7365. All right, this next article is over at arstechnica.com. And this is cool. Um, I'm not an artist, but any of you that are, or are, if you are a, um, how should I say it, a wannabe artist or someone that dabbles with, uh, um, with art, you're going to want to check out Art Rage Studio Pro um, or the Art Rage Studio. Um, Art Rage Studio is 40 bucks. Art Rage, Art Rage Studio Pro is $80. It's available for both Mac and Windows. And if you are a painter, it makes me even want to get this and just play around with it. Um, it looks like uh, you can set the texture and color and the layer and the um, what kind of, if it's oil or if it's uh, different types, if it's a gel or however type of paste you guys use for painting. Um, this is pretty cool stuff. And um, it will render your image as a 3D compatible as well so you can actually put some depth into it so this is some cool stuff here link will be up in the show notes you guys can check it out um, the folks over at uh, Gizmodo uh, well obviously I, didn't, I think I talked about this on Saturday but uh, the Justice Department or not Justice Department but FTC has approved uh, Microsoft to buy Skype so that uh, purchase is going to go down um, also, if you like using Facebook but you can't use it at work, you may want to check out this new app that lets Facebook at work, lets you use Facebook at work. It looks like an Excel spreadsheet. So basically, someone just walking by your uh, by your page or by your or by your um, computer will think you're working in, in Excel, and uh, so you can update, make comments, and all kinds of stuff right in this Excel spreadsheet. But again, it. it uh, this way you can kind of sneak your Facebook using it at work. So uh, just be careful out there, okay? Don't get fired for using Facebook when you're not supposed to on company time. Uh, the big Bitcoin hoist where they stole $500,000 where the Bitcoins just raised havoc on the Bitcoin e ecosphere. The Bitcoin price tumbled after the uh, a massive account hack, and there was a sell-off on uh, Bitcoins, and things just went into a tailspin. Uh, basically, Bitcoin uh, determined the account that was trying to sell off the uh, stolen Bitcoins, uh, locked it out, and they've uh, shut down trading, and they're resetting everything back to around the uh, 17.5 U.S. dollars per Bitcoin, uh, rolling back uh, all transactions. So basically, they're uh, doing a little damage control over there. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be some changes to the Bitcoin infrastructure now that uh, they've had their first um, huge... Uh, basically a uh, hacking attack that was detrimental to the uh, stock price or to the Bitcoin price. Um, but it is interesting that why there wasn't more stringent security measures for the entire economic ecosystem that this thing is uh, operating under to begin with, I don't know. But uh, it's a learn-as-you-go type of deal. But uh, Bitcoin has uh, had some chaos, obviously, here the last few days. Now, this, this next one is a little bit surprising. And it makes you really wonder how much people are using Facebook. A gal who was folding her laundry fell and broke her femur. And because she was in such pain, she couldn't reach a phone. Instead, she logged into Facebook and posted a help message that saved her life. This article said the phone was in the kitchen. The laptop was in the laundry room. 
So was she sitting on the washing machine and with the laptop in her lap and fell and broke her femur, or how did this happen? I you know the having the laptop in the laundry room is about the last place I would consider having my laptop. All that shaking and heat and everything else, you know, the lint and who's going to have your computer with you? You know, if you have your smartphone, that's one thing. You've got your phone in your pocket. You broke your femur. You get your phone out. You make a call or you make a Facebook posting. But she said that she had her laptop in the same room as her. It was in her laundry room. Now, some friends saw it and was able to summon help. And uh, I guess she did spend the night in before someone found her. But um, interesting that she would have her laptop, but she would not in the laundry room. Well, it's it, it helped her, but it just seems kind of odd to me, that's for sure. All right, the final payload for final shuttle flight has been delivered to the launch pad, but sadly there is a uh, engine issue with, uh, with Atlantis. They feel that this engine issue could uh, postpone the uh, July 8th blast off into August, so we'll see what happens there, what the, re what the report is from NASA over the next few days. Along with that, uh, there's been a um, spacecraft that's been uh, basically, actually Cassini, has uh, performed a flyby of Saturn's moon Helene, and it was only 4,330 miles away. A pretty remarkable picture. This is a frozen, icy little moon, and this is completely different uh, than any other type of uh, uh, moon that we've seen in around Saturn. But... Uh, I don't know if how it can qualify. It looks more like a rock that is in <laughs> an odd shaped rock that is in um, that's in the in the in Saturn's orbit. But uh, it definitely looks like it's icy and cold, and it almost looks like you know it could be a picture from looking down on uh, Antarctica to a certain extent. But uh, have a link up in the show notes for you to check that out. If you are a iPad user and you go to the New York Post website, New York Post has blocked access to its website on iPads to basically they're trying to force you to buy their uh, buy their app. So essentially, you can't read the New York Post on your iPad without the app, which is uh, kind of a surprising move. And I don't know how effective this will be, uh, but I hate it when a site won't let me visit the website and tries to force something like that on me. This is a pretty cool one. Um, Pixar, you know, they they really, um, you know, through a Toy Story, they really bought brought CGI to the line front, uh, to the to the forefront of the way movies are done uh, many years ago. But now, in the new version of Cars 2, 12,500 CPU cores were required to render Cars 2. Now, check this out. This is going to blow you away. Making the film required a render farm containing 12,500 CPU cores, and on average, it took 11.5 hours to render a single frame. A single frame? 11 and a half hours? Do you know how many frames there are in a movie? Is that 11 and a half hours per core? had to be that way that's what because you you couldn't have done so that means you're doing 12,500 frames per 1100 11.5 hours is that what they're trying to tell us here I just don't understand why it would take that long to render this is over on uh, CNET uh, I think we'll try to dig some more information out on that but it seems like an awful long time to render a single frame um, and hopefully it didn't take 12,500 because you, you couldn't get it done in a lifetime, the movie done, if it took 11 and a half hours to do a single frame on that many cores. So they got someone's got their, their facts screwed up there wrong. If you're having trouble figuring out how to make folders on your Apple iPhone or iPad or iTouch, I got a good article from Macworld for you to review. Um, Office 365 is going live here in the next uh, six to seven days. As a matter of fact, I was asked to do an interview from some folks on Office Live later this week. I'm see if I can fit that into my schedule. But uh, Office is going to the cloud here officially and will be released here in, in, a, in about a week. If you are into buying gadgets for your iPhone, there's a new blood pressure cup that you can uh, connect to your um, to your iPhone to get a blood pressure reading. Not only that, they got a new thing now where you can actually do an EKG on yourself as well. 
with a little added device, which is kind of cool. I don't know what you would do with it. I guess you'd send it to your doctor and let you figure out if you're having a heart attack remotely. Um, what else do we have in this stack here? I got a couple of little things here before we wrap up the show, and then I've got a um, some email to get into. An Irish ISP is admitting to sending out hundreds of first strike notices to innocent account holders. Of course, you guys know in, that there's a three strike law, and uh, so basically, ISP Earcom is basically implemented the three strike plan incorrectly by sending out uh, notices to people that uh, were not supposed to receive them. Uh, and the last article of the night is the huge European cargo air, uh, car cargo spacecraft has left the International Space Station and uh, will be headed back for a uh, re-entry here over the next few days. And they're making room for an incoming Russian cargo um, craft expected later this week. So ATV-2 is uh, due to be burnt up in the upper atmosphere here uh, in the next several days. So cool stuff going on on the tech side, and I hope you guys enjoyed my coverage tonight. Um, lots of stuff to choose from. I actually cut down the number of articles by probably 25% here because I knew I wasn't able to get through all of them. So those of you that have been up on the stream tonight, how's the stream been? Is the stream been pretty good using this new uh, new method? Um, I'm actually pretty pleased with the with the way it looks here. We'll see how it looks uh, uh, once I uh, get things rendered out. But uh, we're not. I'm pushing on my my uh, MiFi tonight, my Verizon MiFi that how's the stream is going out, and uh, we'll introduce some overlays and stuff like that on, on future shows and be able to do video intros and screen captures and everything on this. So uh, this machine here is running now about uh, oh about 80% utilization on two cores, so uh, pushing it pretty hard. But uh, um, this is the first time I've actually used the Mac to use this new pro well this program that's been out for a while called Wirecast. So I wanted to give that a run for money based on some new hardware that I bought that allowed me to do multiple cameras and not use so much uh, resources on the portable rig and uh, some very big possibilities here with this system where I don't want to haul the whole TriCaster somewhere. I can use a smaller rig to do some uh, smaller events which uh, will give me almost the same functionality which is pretty cool. All right, let me go ahead here, see where my email is, and we'll open GNC comments. And I probably didn't pre-cache this stuff, so we'll have to, yeah, there we go. I got, an I got an email here from Steve, and he says, Hey, Todd, found this article and thought you may be interested, and it's at dawn.com, talking about Japan um, gadget that charges a cell phone over a campfire. <laughs> so kind of a cool little app there, a cool little uh, article. Thanks for that, uh, Stephen. We'll have that up in the, in the show notes. Um, got an email here from uh, Lamar. He said, hey, Todd, I have a four-digit code lock, and I use one password as well. The, phone, the iPhone does not allow the ability to have a mixed character passcode. Can make it difficult, but it's a pain, especially if you're constantly on the phone and have the screen lock set to one minute. And we're basically talking about security of the phone and and the unlock uh, code that we talked about in the last show. Let me uh, shoot. Let me grab something here. Show you guys something too. While I was home, the uh, my new iPhone arrived, so I've got the iPhone uh, iPhone four now. Uh, my old phone was basically having so much trouble holding the charge that uh, went ahead and updated. I'll probably, I'll probably announce the iPhone 5 next week, and I'll be pissed. But I'll say this. I'm using the Mophie on it, uh, the new Mophie for the iPhone 4, much better designed by the folks at Mophie. The, and, and believe it or not, this new battery on this phone is so awesome. I have not even had to use the Mophie pack at this point. So I can say that uh, the phone is holding a charge much longer than my iPhone 3G, but uh, having challenges unlocking, a uh, carrier unlocking my iPhone 3GS for my wife, so I can, she basically said, I want your old phone, and let me go ahead and stick my T-Mobile stick in there, so I, I've got to get that figured out. Uh, there's about 5,000 articles on 5,000 different websites on how to do it effectively. I was able to unlock it, but I haven't been able to get it carrier unlocked yet. I think I still have an incorrect baseband load on the phone, so I'll fix that when I get home. My daughter's all excited because she's going to get the the iPhone 1, the original version of the iPhone. So she's going to get that as her phone. So uh, I get a bunch of happy people at home. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But uh, 
camera on this new, I, you know, I guess I've been so used to the, the crappy camera on the 3GS. I was pretty impressed with the, with the new camera on this old news for you guys, but uh, um, definitely not having as many drop calls either, which is kind of odd because that was what this thing was notorious for doing is having massive drop calls. But um, definitely I got a lot of code on this one uh, for sure. I got an email here from Ian. He said, hey, Todd, um, talking about the extradition of this British student. I think we already covered this in the last show. And, yeah, that's it. I think that's all. I only had a couple comments on today's show. So if you guys want to have any comments, geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is 619-342-7365. I want to thank all of you for hanging out with me here. Spread the word about the show. Tell them about the podcast. Let us know that we're live every Monday and Thursday with a show coming out Tuesday and Friday. Of course, we've got the Saturday morning tech show. There will be no Saturday morning tech show this week because I'll be in transit on the way back to Honolulu uh, during the time that the show is supposed to be live. But we will have a new uh, edition of The Gadget Professor. Hasn't he been doing some great stuff? I've been watching his show, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. But The Gadget Professor is looking for your feedback. So if you've got suggestions for The Gadget Professor, Send him an email, thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. Tell him which gadgets you want reviewed. Um, if he doesn't help him, doesn't have that gadget, we'll help him get it and make sure that uh, we get him a review unit of the topic that you want him to cover. Or if you want him to expand on something, send him an email. Get subscribed to the show. And if you've been watching Langley's uh, podcast, completely different than this show layout. And Langley, I love Langley's kind of laid back style. And he, you know, he kind of gets a little more in there deep on some of the, the topics that I might not. So we we'll love to hear you guys' feedback on both those shows, uh, Langley's show and also uh, Don's as well at, the, at, uh, at uh, the Gadget Professor. But uh, lots of fun and excitement here at Geek News Central. We are looking, I am now looking again for writers, and I am looking for, uh, want to add some additional show hosts. We will get the, uh, the Chrome show launched here in the next couple of weeks. So that is on my to-do list, and it is definitely a go but uh, got to get back to Honolulu, kind of get settled in a little bit and uh, get things squared away there. But I want to thank everyone for hanging out again. Again, my name is Todd Cochran, geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is 619-342-7365. And, of course, check us out at geeknewscentral.com. Until next time, everyone take care and aloha.